gonna reveal my deepest unconscious <laughs> fears and desires. Yeah, thanks, yeah, babe. <laughs> it's not even I... the internet. So, Miss Yesenia, what are your thoughts on whippets? So, whippets, for those listening at home, is like that laughing gas. It's the gas canister that's used to make whipped cream. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, have you done it before? No, I've never done it before. I have had the opportunity to do it, but I don't like the idea of it. So, basically, what people do is they pop it into a balloon, like so all the air releases out into a balloon, and you inhale it. And what you kind yeah, of like? You gotta like inhale, exhale, in, inhale, and then hold your breath, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't like the idea of that because you're just re-inhaling your carbon dioxide, and you're cutting off circu not circulation. You're cutting off oxygen I to your brain. Aren't I, you? I haven't done a whole lot of research on it. I did it once in Vietnam, in Ho Chi Minh City, and they had it openly at a bar. <laughs> it's actually known as hippie crack. Hippie crack. Yeah, it felt like as if I just did like a good session of like Wim Hof the meditation breathing but just in one second and okay. that's what I didn't like about it. It's cutting corners but not in a good way. Not in, in a good a way. Yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. First time that I did it, I did, I was stoned, like I had, I smoked a little bit of weed before but the headache. We're ashamed on us. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm human, <laughs> leave me alone. Okay? I still got kinks in the shadow that I need to work out. But I remember getting like a really killer headache. And my yeah. friend Felipe, he had a, he didn't feel great afterward. I think that's the big issue with it, is that you don't actually have to work to get to that state. It's just, yeah. boom, done. If you want to do it, fine, but yeah. I'm not for it. If you could describe each other as one drug, what would it be and why? You are definitely the... <laughs> manifestation of the spirit of ganja for sure <laughs> <laughs> definitely weed definitely fits in with the trickster archetype which I in my opinion I think that's where weed fits in uh, you're hilarious you make fun of everything <laughs> but you also help me look within like deeper things you know what I mean but in a kind of joking light-hearted way and you make me feel very insecure sometimes and you just plant those seed bombs you know like you just say this one thing but what I don't know, it's like the delayed remote, you know, and it doesn't actually register until much later. It's like, dee, 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 push, that mother, oh man. And I start thinking about this thing and then I'm all insecure and self-cautious because that's what weed makes you feel sometimes, you know? Gives you that paranoia, self-cautious sometimes, but in the best way possible. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what else? Why, why else are you weed? Yeah, you're crazy, <laughs> but you're spiritual. You're like this wise fool in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Uh, like on the on the surface, you not may look sure to, how I feel like, about that. On the surface, you may look very immature and very kind of fun ha 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 loving. fun loving, yeah. but then but you've got a lot of depth to yeah. your personality as well and a lot of wisdom <laughs> to share, like weed. Yeah, because like, weed can whoa, make yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Because <laughs> weed can make you philosophize about the existential nature of reality as well as it can make South Park funnier. Yeah. you know what I mean. Sitting on the couch, so okay. you've got that duality going. Yeah, I can see that. All, All right, right, cool. What drug yeah. am I? I say you're a mixture. You're like a candy flip. A candy flip? Yeah. Oh shit. I feel, I feel like you're, you're mushrooms and weed. Mushrooms and weed. Mm -hmm. Why am I mushrooms? Because you teach lessons. Like I feel like mushrooms just gives you clues at things and I feel like that's what you do. You look at grass and you don't just see grass. You see more than grass. You see the life behind grass and where grass came from and right. you know all that kind of stuff. You're Alice in Wonderland except you actually want to go into the hall. You're like, no, I gotta keep digging, I gotta keep digging. <laughs> but like, I learned my lesson from that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Like, <laughs> a little bit. And then I think and why am I weird? I think you're a little bit of weird because as much as you overthink, there are times where you just stop thinking. <laughs> and you so just kind of like a wise fool as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you're just kind of like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? See those insecurity things that she puts down? I'm going to be thinking about that later. 
that, that comment's gonna come to the surface of my memory bank and I'm gonna be like, fuck yeah, maybe I do think like that too much and I'll start, you know. You're like, wait a second. Yeah, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch. <laughs> she calling me stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, yes, yes okay. I am. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like you're very psychedelic. You know how you're very into your psychology? Yeah. The questions you ask provoke people to think a different way. Right. But you're doing it in a way where it's not actually you. You're just kind of asking questions like, but why? But what does that mean? Right. And I feel like that's what mushroom kind of kind of do sometimes. They kind of just like they drop little seeds like right like everywhere. Yeah. And I feel like that's that's something you do as well. Okay. Parade to weed, and I'm a weed hybrid slash mushroom psilocybin. You must eat the first. You must eat the psilocybin, and talk to the machine elves, and have an experience. Okay. Of too cool. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so we're in a very dodgy alleyway in Melbourne. And what better place to ask the question, how do you keep the spark alive after so many years of being together in a relationship? Uh, <laughs> living on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> so we take breaks every now and then. Not so much from the relationship, it's more just... Like I, I do my thing every once yeah, in a while, you do your thing. Yeah, and then I do my Whether thing. Whether it's travelling or... Yeah, yeah. Studying or... Because yeah. sometimes when you're in a relationship, you get too much of... Look what I found, hang on, one second. Oh. <laughs> Look at this, guys. Look what I found. What were we talking about before? I probably shouldn't touch this right now. Actually, no, you shouldn't. Ew. Okay, I have AIDS now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just wiping on probably this urine covered We're gonna thing. need to take anyway. a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of that break. Yeah, gonna it's, gonna be, it's gonna be time for another one. Um, as I was saying, because uh, sometimes in a relationship, you get too much in, and it's hard to sort of tear apart and it can cause a lot of friction and strain on your relationship. So sometimes it's good just to kind of mellow out mm. and have a little bit of you time. Like. Rediscover who you are. Yeah. You want to be able to be your own person without a partner, but when you are together, it's like even better. Yeah, kind of like you're a superhuman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Fusion. It's like upwards. Fusion. I think a good key as well is open communication. And yep, being honesty, very trust. Very honest, trust, respectful. You know, like when you're being really honest, there's two ways of going about it. There's being respectfully honest, and then there's just being a cunt. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> being a see you next Tuesday. Yes, exactly, <laughs> yes. Because we go on adventures, we don't like to be in a rut. Yeah. If it's just one of us being in a rut or both of us in a rut, we'll kind of be like, okay. Let's yeah. shake things up a little bit. Right. And We're then, yeah. too much and in a routine. respect each other's cycles and yeah. phases. Yeah. Because a lot of the time with relationships, the cycles are different. Exactly. So like sometimes I could be in a my happy... yin, feminine, inward kind of emotional phase. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can, and then I'll go into a phase of like masculine, getting shit done, going yeah. out there. Yeah. And there are yeah. times where you're gonna clash, and that's yeah. totally okay. But then there are gonna be times where you're both synced up together, and you're gonna go. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, yeah. And things get good, so. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that keeps things interesting is constantly evolving and growing, trying new things, going out for adventure, not being boring. Like, it's never a dull moment between us. And this is not saying like, oh yeah, we're so cool. It's because we're kind of both crazy, kooky characters that like to go out, do shit, learn new things. Wait, do it again. Uh, domestic, anyway. Psychedelics solidify or liquefy the idea of being monogamous in relationships. Okay, so monogamous being that you only dedicate your life with one partner. With one partner. So polyamorous is basically an open relationship and I don't think I could get there in this lifetime. 
It's Give really it. about picturing some guy gorilla fucking you and jizzing inside <laughs> you, and then I would be like, oh, you're all tainted. And this, you know, some ultra spiritual person watching this would be like, oh, that's your own shadow self that you need to integrate, and blah, 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 blah. But it's like. The question was just psychedelic. All right. Well, that's a good reply. I reckon it depends on what the psychedelics do to your ego because although we're very for monogamy we know that monogamy is more of an ego kind of thing whereas it's the, your mind your it's mind not even that you're yours but I, I know I get what you're yeah. saying more tribal yeah it's more like it's it's a physical kind of like my heart is yours right I am like so, so internally I, like everything about me you are my life partner so I can see the thing with about open relationships I can understand it biologically mm -hmm. spiritually mm -hmm. Emotion. I can understand all of that, but it's like I'm just not even not close to being there. Not yeah. this lifetime, at yeah. least. You ask if psychedelics solidified or liquefied the idea of monogamy, and for some people, it does liquefy, and they're like, oh, they become more open. It's like, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. You'd be more, you know, to Love be in your an neighbor. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> literally, <laughs> right. But in my case, psychedelics only solidified monogamy mm. because I just, you know, it made me realize how much more I love you. <laughs> Gay. I guess it just made me more aware of how sacred sex is in a lot of ways and just the sure. fact that you could sleep with another guy if they're not completely Aligned, clean yeah. and they, I don't know, their core values doesn't really align with mine then I would feel like spiritually, energetically you would be tainted in a lot of ways and psychedelics even made me more aware of that and sex is a very sacred thing It's a huge transfer of energy Right, and then the only, so then how do you fix that? I would have to know the guy and then that would just make it more weird Right? Because as part of me, it's like, alright, if we were to be in an open relationship, see, it's like, it... wait, if you were to be in an open relationship, it's like, you don't want to know nothing. Mm -hmm. Right? But or then you not. Know everything. Or know everything. And then that's the, yeah, it's the yeah, price yeah. you pay. Like, because if you know nothing, it's like, I don't know what guys are going to be sleeping. Not that I'm, I'm sure you have a good sense of judgment, but at the same time, we do have this ape primal caveman DNA thing that we just mm. like to have sex with someone who's just hot. Mm. Right? I don't know, man. It's a, it's a weird. We're young, but it's like. Uh... See, I'm a little bit more open about the idea, like, I think... As soon as you said that, look at my body language, I just put my arms. <laughs> it's like, no. I, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, no. I'm a little bit more open about this, I'm like, you better close that shit up, woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, as in more towards the idea of being okay with you sharing yourself. Right. Um, or me sharing you, like, I feel like I'm the kind of person that wouldn't want to know anything about it. And like you said with me, like I feel like you're a good judge of character and energetically you're not gonna wanna mix with someone dirty. Who's like, yeah, who's just some like, hot bimbo. Yeah. Just gonna like, say, nah, it's I couldn't. Not attractive to you. And just I like get inverted. <laughs> you know um, when you you know when you see those like really like ten out of ten super attractive girl, but then as soon as she opens her mouth, it's like, oh <laughs> so mean. Savage. Yeah, well, but yeah, no, it's true, it's true. Because it, like, it's a huge transfer, transfer of, of energy. energy. Yeah. So it's like, 100%. if you know what you're doing and you're more open to it, then uh, yeah. But like I said, I think it just depends on what the psychedelics do for you, like internally. Yeah. Like, what, what realities are you open to? Because yeah. it's not just, because you can just listen to, you know, Rick and think that love is just a hormone secreted by animals to compel them to breed or whatever which it kind of is it, it is that, that is yeah. a truth that yeah. is a, but all truths are half truths yeah and there's always something much deeper than that as well if you choose to look at it that way and i choose to look at the more meaningful deeper aspects of reality see i would be open to like a break every once in a while and kind of just like shut your eyes and close your ears kind of thing <laughs> like that would be the the, the extent most, of it yeah or maybe a threesome, but we'd have to never see that person again kind of thing, but not like an ongoing thing. Yeah. It would just be, I don't know, man. And I have a very vivid imagination, and mm. I don't need that shit in my life right now. I know. He's already had dreams where he's waking hey, up. Hey, 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 like... dude. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to reveal my deepest unconscious fucking fears and desires. Yeah, thanks, no, babe. I'm, it's only I'm, the internet. I'm expecting. Oh no, you're right. I mean, People in the YouTube comments are I'm very kind. About, I'm talking about your imagination, like how how vivid and, and creative it is. That anyway, next question. <laughs> <laughs>
it may okay. look like a joint, but uh, <laughs> this video is sponsored by Bearbland. Well, actually, it's not really a sponsor, but an affiliate, you know. But if you want to help your mate Tommy, check the affiliate link in the description box below and use the code word. Your mate Tom. Yeah, there we go. Teamwork. 10% <laughs> discount. Does drugs make you depressed? Well, first of all, you have to define drugs. And then second of all, it depends on who's using it. Okay. I think if you're using drugs for recreation and you're using it to escape your feelings or you get a feeling from drugs that you can't get in your sober life, then yes, I think 99% of the time it's probably going to contribute to your downfall. It's a fine line. Yeah, like I've made, I've actually made a video, a short documentary. It's called "The Untold Truth About Drugs." I'll link it in the description box below. It kind of encapsulates what Everything drugs is about much, yeah. in the most unbiased way possible. I Pros, think. cons. Do I take any psychedelics now? Uh, no. I, at the moment, I do not feel the call for it. Um, when, when's the last time you took psychedelics? I've been in Canada, I reckon. Right. Yeah, LSD. I haven't had an interest. I haven't felt the call to it. I think I'm still sort of integrating. A lot of the lessons I learned on acid, on ayahuasca, like... It's a lot to process. It is a lot yeah. to process, and I don't want any new, <laughs> new overwhelming information coming in right now, so... Hang on a sec. It's gone real dark. Oh, no! We're so black! We're losing! <laughs> losing light! <laughs> Whether I'm going what? to do it, I don't know, maybe, just... So it's been 18 months for you then, it's same as me. Because yeah. the last psychedelic trip I had was Iboga over 18 months ago, and just what the other week I had a like revelatory experience yeah. of like putting it all together it took 18 months for that shit yeah but that was pretty heavy but now we don't plan on tripping anytime not anytime soon, soon uh, it's good on that note how much have psychedelics affected your outlook on life and your purpose do you ever regret taking them number one I think they've showed me how much I don't actually know and also being more aware of other layers of reality that, that I didn't even know existed. It's like kind of like mm -hmm. you spend your whole life spending time in your house and you think that's the whole spectrum of life. And then psychedelics is like stepping outside and you're like, oh my God, there's yeah. a whole other world it, out here. It opens the yeah. people just a little more where you're like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I personally don't regret taking any of them. Yeah, um, I have. I went through a phase where I regretted yeah, touching all psychedelics. Of it. All yeah. of it. I was like, anti psychedelics I had to convince like, him. Yeah, well, that was a really dark him. place that I went to. Yeah. So you can't really. Well, I had to constantly remind really you. Me. I had to constantly remind you the lessons you've actually learned yeah. and how far you've come along from all that. Exactly. And that's the main reason why I don't regret it because, like you said, it's like opening that people. Like I said, opening that people a little bit more. Yeah. Um, it's changed my perception on. It broadened my perspective. My perspective. It's my perspective. My perception. It's broadened my perception. I see a lot more, I feel a lot more, but at the same time, I've but, learnt how to mm, block off the stuff that I'm not supposed to be, the stuff that I'm It too opens you up to everything, to. though. Yeah, well, like that's, you feel that's more why. joy, but you also, your capacity, You're more the, your capacity to feel pain also deepens mm. as well. Mm. But that's part of being human. Yeah, and in terms of regretting it, because the thing is, like, when you have a psychedelic trip that you aren't prepared for, it opens up the floodgates. Mm to massive levels of the shadow trying to integrate itself into the whole and that's what happens when some people have really horrible trips and leave kind of get trauma they get traumatized, traumatized you know what yeah. I mean yeah so that's what happened to me and I think it happens to a lot of people is that they they face something that they just weren't willing to face it's like getting a six-year-old child and then explaining the concept of death and that you're gonna die it's like dude that kid's not ready for that shit man yeah you know what I mean and it is the truth but it's like you gotta take it step at a time and not like Carl Jung said, and I quote this all the time, and I'll continue to quote this, <laughs> beware of unearned wisdom. And this is what happens when you try to skip ahead a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to honor where you're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially when you try to be too spiritual, because then that's an ego game, so. Yeah, I agree. Right, guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you leave a like comment below share it with a friend click on the notification bell Ding! <laughs> <laughs> spread the word, spread the word. <laughs> so the sun's just going down so we're on a limited time span here for those who don't know we have a new patreon milestone 
which will not only ensure the sustainability of this channel, but I can start working on the psilocybin documentary. For those who've seen it, remember, I think your first mushroom my experience. My very first experience like, on mushrooms. Yeah, so it was like my first kind of viral-ish video. It was too biased towards yeah. it, and it, I, I just didn't like the way it was presented. So I want to redo it, but just completely step it up a notch in terms of production value and explore the more mystical aspects of psilocybin. So I think it would be really cool and I'm very excited. I'm going to get other people to collaborate on this massive project. But if you are interested in seeing this at all, show us some love on Patreon. Even if it's a little, it's two bucks a month. It all makes a difference. And uh, i got five kids to feed, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> there is no time and like, you know, I'm sure one timeline in the future. We've got I'll have five kids. kids. So think of future Tom, guys. He has what? kids and shit. I don't want to be popping out no five babies. Okay, maybe not five. <laughs> two. I've got All two right. kids, man. You know what I'm we, saying? We got kids to feed. <laughs> okay, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, <laughs> anyway. And no, we're actually 100% sober and we haven't smoked weed at all. As you can see, we're constantly on drugs without actually taking any drugs. It's pretty cool, actually. We've got lots of cool projects, collaborations, yeah. podcasts. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate the support, the love, the questions. You guys asked some really good questions. If you did send us a message and we didn't answer it, we might have saved it and we might be doing it for the podcast. All right, podcast. We did, yeah, we're going to do a podcast together. So we're gonna, <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Anyways, keep an eye out. High five. We did it. fell and that thing thought it was us and it went Did you lose a glove there? It was like a cat or something. <laughs> Did you shit yourself? Yeah, fucking <laughs> no. What was the marsupial lion?